Hey, what's going on, guys? Hello, you guys. This is Marvin. And Amber. And, and we're, we're with, with the, the family, family O. o. We are here today with another installment of our Family O audio experience, mm-hmm. aka our podcast. Yeah. Back for our first episode <laughs> since this quarantine yeah, started. It's been a while, but we're glad to be back. Yeah, and so um, for those of you that are listening to us uh, via Apple, um, Stitcher, Google Play, uh, Spotify, um, if you could do us a huge favor and share this podcast with a friend or someone that you think that would get super, uh, get a lot of super important value from our conversation mm-hmm. today. Um, and if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. It helps the algorithm spread positive family entertainment such as <laughs> such as this so as all and lastly um if you want to support the channel what we got going on you appreciate awesome positive family content the way to do it uh the cash app is in the description box of this video so we're gonna jump straight in sweetie sounds good i'm excited babe we are talking to you guys uh about or we are going to be answering mm-hmm. some of our questions and comments that we've gotten over our most popular video on our youtube channel and that is uh just Journey? Well, I just want to say it's it's just been just it's a baby of, of ours. It is. It's like another Libby, uh, uh, you know, a new baby kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And what is this for you? Now you say journey to the motherland. I had to give that intro. I don't know why. <laughs> um, that was a labor of love. And when I tell you guys, the feedback has been overwhelmingly awesome and positive. Mm-hmm. Um, it's something that we are looking forward to, especially because we're travelers. Yes. We have not been able to move around. Nobody's been able to move around, obviously, but traveling is so near and dear to us mm-hmm. that the first thing we're going to do when we get the all clear is probably go somewhere. Yeah. So um, we want to just literally cover a lot of the questions and we're literally going to pick them at random. So if you're watching this on YouTube, mm-hmm. we're going to share our screen in a moment so you can follow through as we're looking through. It's about 512 comments. That's a lot. Yes. A lot. And so we're going to cover as many as we can. Mm-hmm. So just to um, give a little bit of background for those of you that may be new to our channel or those of you um, that haven't seen Journey to the Motherland, like where have you been? Yeah. Um, but we um, decided for our, I don't even remember, I think, let me see, it was four years ago right yep, now. So that must have been our eighth wedding anniversary that we wanted to travel to Africa, yeah. West Africa and Ghana, Accra to be exact. So Accra, Ghana. Yeah. And so um, we went in November um, 2016 and it was by far the most amazing um, international travel that we have done. Yes. And uh, mm-hmm. fun fact is that obviously uh, many of you know this if you're following us on mm-hmm. Instagram. Um, we're Nigerian. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am born here in the United States. Um, first generation, and my babe is uh, Nigerian mm-hmm. by proxy. <laughs> I guess is the best way to say it. Yeah. Um, but you know, one of the things that made me super attracted to babe um, is that she just has embraced the concept of oneness as a culture. Mm-hmm. Like we're all the same. We're all Africans. It doesn't matter where you originated. Um, where you actually are connected to is is, is home. Exactly. And that was like super attractive for me because I was trying to find myself, even though you would think um, being born here, mm-hmm. first generation, that I would know a whole, whole bunch about the motherland. That's actually not the case. Yeah. Um, I understand the language. Um, Igbo specifically mm-hmm. is the tribe that we're from, but I don't speak it. Um, I speak a couple of words here and there, mainly broken English or pigeon is what mm-hmm. they call it. So you probably, if you watched our video, you heard me um, kind of spit it out yes. throughout mm-hmm. and able to navigate. But mm-hmm. um, the first thing I want to answer is why we travel to mm-hmm. Accra mm-hmm. and not Nigeria. So do you want to start it off or? Yes. So I, I'll start it off. So when we first decided that we wanted to go to Africa, it was so important to us. First of all, to do it because Babe had gone before to Nigeria. Yeah. I had never been to Africa and we wanted to expose liberty um, to our culture as well. Absolutely. So, um, uh, naturally, you know, we would have wanted to go to Nigeria, of but course. at the time there were a lot of issues going on. Yeah. Um, it was around that time with like the it's, uh, Boko Haram yes. was going on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, 
Go ahead. Yeah, and so it really was not safe for us to travel. As a matter of fact, there were um, actually advisories um, with the uh, airlines letting us know that so, so on and so forth is taking place. Yeah. It is not a good time to travel. Yeah. And so we were super disappointed. So we just started doing a little bit more research and we started seeing that like a lot of African Americans were traveling to Ghana. And so that's kind of where it started, yeah. right? No, it was. That's, mm-hmm. that's absolutely it. But mm-hmm. yeah, we plan to go to Nigeria, of mm-hmm. course, but it just, like I said, it just didn't work it didn't at that work time. It didn't work out at that time. Yeah, yeah. it didn't. So, um, so we're going to jump in right now mm-hmm. and share our screen here uh, for YouTube. And please, please, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button if you haven't already. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're listening to this podcast, you can catch the video version of this, guys uh, and gals, on YouTube. And we're going to share our screen right now. Mm-hmm. All right. So, Here's our screen here. We're just on our page right now. And I've kind of blew it up to the comment section. So Mm -hmm. let me kind of look and see. And if you see anything, Mm -hmm. sweetie, that you think would be good to answer, let me know. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, actually, the first comment that I'm looking at now, uh, if you come to Africa, forget about the Western lifestyle. This is another continent, cultural country and culture. Don't compare anything. Just embrace your roots. And if you have money, invest in any sector which is not doing well. So um, a couple of comments that we've gotten mm-hmm. um, in, as it relates to to something similar to what this this person, Seven Wakengi, said. Yeah. Um, you want to keep it on the screen or you want me to you unshare can take it? it back, back. All mm-hmm. right. So the, the first thing that jumps out to me when a person says, um, don't come to a country with a Western uh, mindset. For me, mm-hmm. The thing is, here's the thing. Um, there are lots of individuals that immigrated to the United States or anywhere mm-hmm. from uh, where any part of Africa. Yeah. And then there are folks that were born here in the United States or the UK or whatever the case is. So the way that you're raised obviously is going to shape a large part of your ideals and the things that you look for. But as one of my favorite rappers say, um, we're not new to this, we're true to this. So (laughs) being that uh, I've been prior to meeting Babe several Mm -hmm. times, and I count 10, actually 10 times that I've been to Nigeria, there is always going to be um, me bringing where I started Mm -hmm. as far as where I was born. I'm gonna Mm -hmm. bring those those things with me there. So prime example. Um, when I was younger, uh, this was earlier in the 2000s, the last time that we went, there was a part of Nigeria specifically, and, and this ties into Ghana because it's all, it's all West Africa, but there was a part of Nigeria that there was no running water, there was no electricity. Um, Nepa, Napa, I think is what they call, is the electric company that runs all the power grids out there. and going out coming from a place where you're used to being able to flip the switch in a room and the light comes Mm -hmm. on and not being able to do that i think you know maybe if we went with like a travel agency or or something like that where there's a local contact that can give us the lowdown on every aspect of where we're going maybe that would have set our expectations a little bit better but we traveled as true travelers guys and that's the big thing because i know you guys probably see Boris Kojo and a lot of the mm. famous people that have been going back to Ghana um, with the return, year, yeah, of the return the year of the return. But these people, the red carpet is rolled out for these individuals. Mm-hmm. They're not going through any part, mm-hmm. for the most part, where we traveled through um, without some type of guide or some type of preparation that was made yeah. prior to their arrival. Like the I, itinerary and yes, everything. Yes, yeah. I guarantee it. And, mm-hmm. and so with that being the case, in our experience, when we came, it was a little bit of shell shock because I hadn't been for a decade yeah. prior to that, actually 16 years um, prior to that. And when we got there, it was I was super excited, mm-hmm. honestly. Um, it was hot as a cot, <laughs> but I was super excited. So mm-hmm. we, anybody that isn't from a country, and mm-hmm. it, it can't just, it's not just Africa, but anywhere and you're traveling to somewhere that's completely different from what you've experienced, it's going to be different. There's mm-hmm. going to be an adjustment. And we were ready and excited about that. Exactly. Yeah. We mm-hmm. knew that it was going to be a different type of um, experience. I think like Bay was just saying, being in Nigeria and seeing there was no running water and, mm-hmm. you know, um, having to use generators and so on and so forth yes. and stuff like that, which that's not, that wasn't really a big deal, but, um, 16 years ago and then to go back 
to Africa, to West Africa, and yeah. then you're still experiencing um, similar things. It was just like, oh my goodness, because yeah. another thing that we um, did not mention is that there was actually a Instagram page that we caught wind of as well. Yeah. And on that particular page, like it was just really like showing um, uh, Ghana in a light that was extremely positive, which Ghana is a very positive place. Mm -hmm. um, it was just, I feel like, um, when you watch our doc documentary, my hope is that you got a very beautiful and realistic view of our experience. And so I think that sometimes people are trying to sell Africa um, to uh, us that are Africans that are not there on the continent, right. that we are not given a very realistic it's not idea honest. of what's... Yeah, it's not honest. <laughs> ...of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, and so in saying that, that's that was some of the shocking parts that we were like, oh, wow, you know, and and for I kept telling Bay for me, I didn't want to go and see America in Africa. Yeah, like we that was not the expectation. We didn't Absolutely want that. Not. However, we don't expect that we have to like, you know, pay, for example, pay, you know, have to pay for tissue and things like that. Right. You know, it's kind of like in this this continent that we talk about all the time that has so many uh, resources and riches and things like that. It yeah. just be kind of it was a little disappointing in some instances. Yes, you know? as, as far as the as far as an aspect of it. Yes, if anybody that goes and and just falls out, catches the Holy Ghost, and <laughs> oh my God, it's amazing. <laughs> that is awesome, and and I don't diminish that experience because mm -hmm. if you have never experienced Africa in any capacity and mm -hmm. you go, it is a life-changing experience and it was, it was. a life-altering experience mm -hmm. for us but again mm -hmm. we are very african in the way that we mm -hmm. carry ourselves we bring africa with us everywhere yes. uh it's not a coat that we take off when it's convenient mm -hmm. um we wear it we represent it look at babe's head wrap if you're mm -hmm. watching this on youtube and by way of a crop by way of a crop <laughs> and for me you know I, I, I always keep a lot of facial hair on me and just i, I don't like try to look super duper clean cut. Let me put it mm -hmm. like that. I try to represent myself as a natural African man. Mm -hmm. When I do business, I do business under my uh, my Nigerian name mm -hmm. so that people know, and it's a conversation starter, yeah. uh, where are you from? And and that has really you know helped me. So let's yeah. keep going here. Um, I hope we- That was a long yeah, comment. It was, yeah. a, it was a lot of context mm -hmm. that we had to unpack on that. So, yeah. all right, so let me share the screen again. And then we will answer another question. All right. Let's go down a little bit. Someone said, y'all daughter is so, so cute. cute. We got Thank so you. many comments about Libby, y'all. Yes. Just crazy. Libby was three years old. So that's yeah. just amazing to me that she just ha has had that experience already of going back home. Yes. All right. Uh, someone says, you are so right about simple things like public bathrooms, mm -hmm. pavements to historical sites, or just maintaining historical infrastructure or improving tourist attractions, which the Ghanaian government just simply have no common sense to improve to attract more tourists. Ghan Ghanaian leaders talk a lot with no action to back it up in my book. They are useless. Oh my goodness. Now right, we well, definitely, I, I'm stepping right now. Yeah, say how you we, really feel. We, yeah, exactly. We <laughs> definitely don't agree with that. We don't yeah, think that no. any of the leaders are useless or anything like that. No, no. But I think that person was just commenting on the things that we had brought up that we thought were right. just yeah. very unique situations T towards the end of the yeah, video we uh -huh. kind of laid out a couple of concerns. exactly especially having our daughter like we were saying our three-year-old daughter yeah. i'll never forget um maybe we can um in the video at least link um uh, this part that we were talking about but with the restroom i will never forget y'all we were in um was it macola market that was Ma the person uh, macola market, Macaulay yeah. market okay so we was in the macola market and I'll never forget, um, we went to the restroom and this was like the first experience with the restroom that was just insane. Um, and Libby did not want to use the restroom, you know, because it was just very abnormal to her. Yeah. And a lady was in there and I was telling her, I was like, you know, my daughter has to use the restroom and Libby is potty trained at this time. Right. So she was like, do you have a diaper? Take a diaper, put it on her, let her use it in the diaper and then take it off. And I was like... Yeah, is she no, serious? That's not, that's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. <laughs> but she was really trying to help me out because Libby would not go to the restroom. It was so yeah. foreign, you know. So, yeah. yeah. And, and and it's not. It, well, that person was very, you know, colorful and her and his or her <laughs> disdain yeah. for the the Guinean government. We ain't in in all that like mm -hmm. that. Um, what we will say is is that again, 
um, the resources are there. Um, this country, this continent is mm -hmm. rich with trillions in, of dollars in resources. And in a lot of ways, unfortunately, it's not managed mm -hmm. um, as effectively as it could be because of politics. Um, politics are always an issue wherever you are in the yeah. world. And so my area of concern with that was that not just for people that are visiting, having public restrooms and things of mm -hmm. that nature, but um, for the for the people and the yeah. citizens of Ghana, yeah, for the citizens there. of Accra and, and the outer part, mm -hmm. at least in the hyper developed areas, mm -hmm. such as the main city area that we were in, mm -hmm. um, these these are these are really honestly basic amenities that probably would take maybe a few mi million CD to build the infrastructure yeah. out and then just maintain it yeah. at that point because I feel like if you build something that the citizens can be proud of. Yeah. They're going to do their part to maintain mm -hmm. that because, for one, that's going to drive more business to that area. Individuals can really see that, okay, wow, the government really mm -hmm. does care about not only the tourist dollars, but the people that are actually living there day to day, which are providing an economy for uh, this, this, this country to sustain itself and making things like a, a public restroom and, mm -hmm. and, and paved roads and all that. That's real, real basic. Yeah, like, basic Like stuff. real basic. And it doesn't take a whole, whole lot to make something like that happen in our personal opinion. And that's why we want it because we want, mm -hmm. we suggested it and we're just a family that, you know, we, we don't have any uh, connection. Well, my babe has a DNA connection to Ghana oh, based I on do. the African ancestry. Yeah. So we actually did truly go to the motherland. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, these are what we were, what we were asking are very basic because I can guarantee you, I, t I say it all the time. There's a hotel in Ghana called the Moven Pick, mm -hmm. and that area where that hotel is looks really nice. Looks really we nice. We passed by it a few times when and we were there. Yes, you would think you were in the UK or London or, or America. I mean, it's really, really nice. So yeah. that tells me that the individuals that are invested or invested money in that area, that those resources can be done all over mm -hmm. um, the city. We're not saying in the actual villages that they need to have it, but why not? You know what I mean? Give everyone um, an opportunity to enjoy uh, this, the benefits of yes, living in a city. Exactly, My I agree. Opinion. All right, next All right. question. So let's keep going here. I hope you're enjoying, uh, enjoying this. And mm -hmm. if you have follow-up questions, leave them in the comments of this uh, podcast on YouTube and mm -hmm. we will try our best to answer the questions. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's see. Um, let, let me see if anything jumps out to us. Uh, all right. So someone said, I was born and raised in Marion, Indiana, fully American by birthright, but African by soul right. I like that by soul right. Uh, I moved to Africa in 2003, Ghana to be exact. I can't believe that black people would choose this struggle in America just for a few comforts like someone else having a toilet. Living there, I always had a comfortable toilet and living quarters. I lived in a mansion for six months of my stay in heaven mm -hmm. and then spent the regular African life in Corte court, uh, Bobi. I lived there a total of five years. I can't wait to hear from you in five years. You can't just, just, can't. just can't come back here to the treatment and life of second class citizens and not remember how peaceful and accepting Africa is to the soul. All right, we'll stop there because yeah. they get a little political. So, um, yeah, definitely when we went mm -hmm. to Africa, the entire time we were there, we were overall very, very relaxed. Yes, I think when, very peaceful. Yeah, when we had to kind of deal with a lot of, a little bit of foolishness here and there yeah. with some of the individuals in the country. Um, that was a stressful, a higher stress time, and then just the heat in general. Yes. <laughs> but it was very, very, very isolated. I, yes. What I will tell you is that the people in Ghana are, oh my goodness, very literally, nice yes, some of the, the just the most welcoming, nicest people. These were Absolutely. isolated situations we had in a few instances, which is what Babe is talking about. Yeah. Um, but it was extremely peaceful. But, you know, I tell Babe all the time, I feel like um, you can have peace wherever you are. It's always a choice, just like being happy. Happiness is a choice. So, you know, even now with the whole um, pandemic going on, you know, like we're not able to go to church, you know. And what's, what's really amazing is that we keep hearing from our church and then even just other ministries, um, the idea that church is 
church. God is within us is what I meant. Yeah. So, and we, we knew that, but I, I think that some of us get caught up in the, the building so much that it's like, oh my goodness, we can't go to church now. You're like, what's, you know, what's going on? Yeah. So I kind of look at this situation in the same way that yes, Ghana was peace, peaceful, but Georgia is also very peaceful for us. Yeah. Um, we live in the country, y'all. I mean, like literally where farms and barns and animals and everything is all around where we live and we yeah. have nature and it's it's amazing. And um, I, I joke with Babe all the time about how, um, to me, Atlanta is the closest thing to Africa from my experience anyway, because yeah. there's so many African people here. Yeah. Um, and but then also it's just very beautiful and even um we were talking to someone one time and we were just talking about how relax relaxing and laid back and just peaceful it is here and that person had a different outlook so it's all about what's up here yeah. and what you're choosing to have in your life no doubt um ghana is is very beautiful and peaceful um the ideal however that you can only gain peace from being in one place or another to me is just one you know one yeah. person opinion or thought process because um you know i'm i'm very peaceful what about you yeah we're talking about here or in africa here yeah here in atlanta yeah, it's super peaceful i mean yeah. we're it's i mean the quarantine has been some of the best mm -hmm. relaxing we've ever had yeah, and and, out, awesome. and and i can only imagine in a place like africa mm -hmm. right now mm -hmm. that doesn't have a lot of the the political fighting and all the news mm -hmm. and just all that the news cycle um, that that we have here in America, the way we have it here in America, in a very divisive way, yeah. um, I can only imagine in Africa it being even more chill. Even more chill, um, yeah. Because yeah, exactly. And don't get it twisted, y'all. We've already talked about plans of definitely, you know, getting um, property. Oh yeah, is that what it is? Yeah, real and, estate and real estate and and making one country in Africa, you know, um, our, our second home, home, our second home. So we're not exactly sure yet because we haven't been everywhere yet. You yeah. know, we don't want to just settle on the only place or a few places that we've gone. It's so much, you know, to see in this uh, continent. And we wouldn't just pick Nigeria because that's yeah. where I'm from. That yeah. we would pick wherever we feel led yeah. to buy property uh, in Africa. We absolutely. Mm -hmm. want to invest in, in, in oh, the kind of so yes. um yeah so we're excited so we got a lot more traveling to do back there yeah we so do. That we can uh if things get crazy here or if wakanda does end up happening <laughs> so, we we have a, a place that we I can, already told him we can I, run and hide to. exactly i told him i was like it's, it's another part of i'm not gonna say too much y'all because you know we just yes. we don't want to ever spoil anything yeah. but i was just telling babe about a certain other part of africa um so you know we'll see we'll see uh, Anyway, moving on to the next question. All right, and uh, hit that thumbs up button if you haven't already. Let me share the screen again, and then we'll look at some more comments mm -hmm. here. All right. Um, more. We keep getting so yeah. many of Liberty. Here's someone, um, you look beautiful in your scarf. Africa is too hot and humid for those wigs, extensions, etc. So I wanna talk about that, y'all. So. Um, if you notice, most of the time when you see me, I always have my head wrap. And what's crazy is that I always wore head wraps, love head wraps. But I will say, and Babe and I have talked about this, going to Africa just kind of ignited um, more of me wanting to just wrap my head because I literally, if you watch our documentary, I was twisted up when we first got there. But by day two, maybe I yeah, think. Yeah, day two. Day two, I wrapped my hair and I did not take the wrap out the whole time I was there. It was, it was just so comfortable. I felt comfortable and natural in in my natural habitat, you know? Um, so um, the thing about uh, when you go to Ghana, and I'm sure it's other parts of Africa as well, is that you will see fabric everywhere in the markets and um there are really good prices and you can get someone that can make, yes make clothes for you and stuff so um yeah that's kind of funny and wearing a hair wrap it is you know it was humid and hot but it was fine you yeah know? it wasn't it wasn't bad houston where we originally lived oh houston was, was worse than africa. yes was, I mean, was worse than ghana at that time ghana, yeah. in november because we heard yes. it does get hotter but. it does get hot yes yeah. but uh, we were during we were there during a period uh, i remember we call it in nigeria mm -hmm. uh, hammer time mm -hmm. uh, hammer time and it's really <laughs> when the um the i actually looked into this yes. this is when uh from the sub-sahara 
the sand and all that that comes from the actual desert parts of Africa mm -hmm. kind of get come down into mm -hmm. the southern part of the continent and it's just really is you're just gonna be ashy 24 7 <laughs> but it's also a very nice uh very nice breeze Please. during that period yes. and one thing as well that i'll say about africa is that we had some of the best tans i oh, mean oh yes we did they had a very nice yeah. golden brown tan yeah. girl you he like a piece of chicken i know he was <laughs> <laughs> he, he did say that Libby yeah. had a little cute tan we all yeah. had tans we we were beautiful yeah and i i have more of a reddish hue mm -hmm. come out my my undertones if you're looking on youtube yeah. are more red yeah um so i don't get dark dark just kind of get a little red yeah so, i loved it but yeah, it, was, it was it was brownie there you go mm -hmm. all right so let's share the screen again look okay. at some more comments hope you guys are enjoying this yeah one said nice young family in the motherland long live good people thank mm -hmm. you thank you um so many nice comments about live yeah definitely all right i want to find a good juicy one yeah. where a person was mad at us so let me mm -hmm. find it all right oh look here's one all right uh thank you for sharing regards to this Someone said, look into Rwanda. Rwanda, yeah. Um, we definitely would like to, yeah. to travel there. Yeah, talk about that. Um, someone said, best documentary ever done on Ghana. Good job, guys. You have exposed a lot of things Ghana can improve on, especially sanitation. We will take it up. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't to, mm -hmm. let me just uh, pause right here. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't have spent the money that we spent if we weren't trying to, um, especially with this documentary that we did, mm -hmm. If you watch it, we shot the thing like a doggone movie yeah. <laughs> with an amazing soundtrack. Um, soundtrack was good. We didn't even have half of the uh, equipment that we yeah. have now. So we're excited to do yeah. Journey to the Motherland Part, part two. 2. And we ain't going to tell y'all where it's going to be at, but we already know. Mm -hmm. um, but um, the objective was to make Africa look great yes and i believe we accomplished that if you look mm -hmm. at the number of folks that have thumbs up the video um that lets us know that you know you can't mm -hmm. please everybody but yeah. the overwhelming majority of folks really like the way that we presented it because we weren't with the bbc no. uh we weren't with npr we weren't with any big budget it was just a family a cheap Canon 7D yeah. with a camera with no we microphone. Had no mic, no lighting, no, no nothing. No nothing. <laughs> just everything just mm -hmm. out of that one camera yeah. and uh and a jump drive. I mean and um uh memory stick that I prayed to God stayed and didn't get corrupted mm -hmm. with all those files of of picture footage. on the footage. Yeah. But it was always, always, always to make Africa look great because yeah. that's where we're from. Yeah. So if we are slightly critical about a few areas mm -hmm. of that we should be able to do that. Yeah. Anybody that just makes it like it's perfect is absolutely lying to you mm -hmm. and more than likely trying to get your money in some capacity. We ain't trying to get your money. So no. uh, that's that's that. So we were able to give a very uh, objective yeah. um, uh, perspective of the of the country that we visited and it mm -hmm. could have been anywhere in exactly. Africa. So, all right, let me uh, jump back in here and okay. share the screens. I'm really enjoying this. Me I hope too, you babe. are as I well. Am, yeah. yeah, this is actually kind of dope. It is. All right, so... Let's scroll through here, scroll okay. through here. Your yeah, honest so appraisal. Nigerian, Nigerian is pretty similar. Most, uh, born and raised in Texas, da da da, man, is uh, probably missing. Where are, where, where are you guys from? Very awesome family, Africa Unite. I'm looking for one where the person says something real. <laughs> oh, okay. So speaking to the children in the market, your African Ghanaian accent was spot on. You are, you are truly, truly Ghan Ghanaian. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint. I'm not Ghanaian. Babe I'm is. <laughs> <laughs> the accent is just a universal um, West African, West African Af yeah. pigeon English. That's yeah. what it is. Mm -hmm. If we were in Jamaica, they call it Patois. <laughs> yeah. um, it's just, just a, uh, I knew that for one, um, let me tell you something interesting about just going to Africa in general and not, not living there or being from there mm -hmm. originally. People will know. I don't know what it is mm -hmm. about our mannerisms that give us up before mm -hmm. we even open our mouth, mouth. People knew that we were not from there. And um, I tried my darndest to coach babe on some mm -hmm. things to not do and do while we were there. Yeah. Um, but people knew. They but knew. but uh, what I will say is when that accent fires out, um, it, 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 it I believe it breaks down walls yeah. for certain people because they may be looking at us, especially because we were walking around with a camera, y'all. Yeah. Um, so already we got some crazy looks yeah. a couple times that we didn't put on camera um, of people that were kind of upset at yeah. us for recording because they assumed that we were recording for a negative reason, but we yeah. were really truly documenting our experience. Mm -hmm. And um, 
well, I'm not going to say what I want to say on camera, but um, if you see us with a camera, just know that we're, and I'm just saying this, and, and if we see run into anyone, mm -hmm. uh, family old family in, in Africa when we're there, it's, it's, it's all love. You can come up to us and it'll, it'll be all love. Mm -hmm. But I can't speak for any other cultures that are there with a camera um, and their uh, objectives for documenting what they're documenting with us because there were no scenes with kids with flies in their eye. We, I always had a certain perspective yeah. of Africa and my my parents are directly from there yeah. and it made me not want to travel to Africa. So I, I felt like we had to make something that would make people be very interested in exactly. going to Africa. And specifically when we say people, we're specifically talking about African-Americans, yes. Jamaicans, Cari you know, people from the Caribbean, um, you know, people from, I don't know, Brazil, uh, African people yeah. in the, the, the diaspora. Yeah, diaspora. That's yeah. what we were talking about, like, because yeah. the, the people that are in Africa are there, but we want to get us to come right. back home, you know, so we can connect with our brothers and sisters that are there, you know, and just learn Absolutely. more about who we are. And for me, like, I, I really didn't care whether, you know, um, we went, um, I didn't really care what part of Africa we went to, to be honest with you, as long as we went. Yeah. And so, um, you know, that's just kind of how I feel. Because I think some people may kind of feel, some of our people, let me be specific, may yeah. sometimes feel like, well, I don't, you know, I don't really know where do I start? Where do I go? You know, because you may not feel like you belong. But when right. we came back home, we were welcomed with open arms yeah. like they said we had a few little isolated situations but yeah. it is it's, it was it's, it was circumstantial right. so it had nothing to do with the people of ghana at all yeah. i mean very welcoming people i mean just like i just can't say that enough very like, warm yeah. very warm people yeah um but yeah but it, I, I will say this mm -hmm. you know in west africa Ghana is definitely one of the friendlier parts to mm -hmm. go, you know, at Middle East, so and in, in, in you can ask any Nigerian. Mm -hmm. Nigeria isn't super safe to travel to mm -hmm. as far as moving around the entire uh, country. Um, where my family originally, originally is mm -hmm. in, in uh, Nigeria is an area that um, most folks that go to Nigeria, they typically will stay in Lagos, or you might have heard it say Lagos, it's Lagos. Um, but that is more the, the metropolitan. Mm -hmm. um, you would be okay if you're just hanging around in that area, because again, uh, the infrastructure is built up a certain kind of way. Um, you can go to places like Victoria Island that are gorgeous, 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 where mm -hmm. the millionaires live, and it, you just, you wouldn't think you were not in um, America or something like that mm -hmm. but we would want the way we travel is we like yeah. to move and shape so yeah. we want to move like local so we would want to go to the villages mm -hmm. and whatnot because that's exact that's where my grandparents mm -hmm. uh, my grandmother just passed not too long ago yeah. so we're gonna go to go uh, see her mm -hmm. um, her where she's buried yes. and that it, it's dangerous I'll just mm -hmm. say that and I won't say the exact area for yeah. privacy reasons yeah. but um, to go from Lagos where we'd come in to that area Nine times out of ten, you're gonna get pulled over by some folks that want you to hand off a little bit of money. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, and that's just kind of is what it, it is. is. What it Any is. Nigerian you ask them, they'll tell you. And if they say it's not true, they're lying. So um, until we feel comfortable uh, going mm -hmm. in that capacity, which more than likely we'll have to travel uh, with one of our family members that yeah. go on a regular basis. Um, I am looking forward to going to Nigeria, Me but too. I don't think that's gonna be where Journey to the Motherland 2 is yeah. is um, filmed, but we will do a Journey to the Motherland there. Yeah. Um, I, I'm excited about that. So, all right, so let's keep going here. We're at the 30 minute mark at this okay. point. So we're gonna try to keep this under one hour. It yeah. is of course a podcast. So uh, we appreciate you vibing with us. Mm -hmm. And if you stick stuck around this long, Go ahead and subscribe if you're on YouTube mm -hmm. and of course subscribe if you listen on the podcast. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's see here. Some it's like, where are all those comments? Like we yeah, always we see. saw some hate. Yeah, I, that's what I'm looking for. All right, so, but that just it's goes a, to show yeah, that- over, It's a lot of nice comments, yeah. which I'm not looking for any hate necessarily. Babe might be, babe like to, you know, set people mm -hmm. uh, straight sometime, but I'm looking for just some questions or something, yeah, so. Yeah. All right, so okay, this right here. We're looking to see what this okay. is. Okay, so lovely video. Ghana is great. It needs some serious changes, like modern transport system, and there is an over reliance on religion, especially white Jesus. However, mm -hmm. I recommend a trip. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'll I'll speak quickly on the okay. transportation. Um, 
So if you do a lot of research on travel to Ghana, you're going to hear people talk about the tro tro, mm -hmm. um, which is their um, their bus, you know, their their bus local system. trans yeah. um, bus system. Do we recommend it? Absolutely not. And I'll tell you why. Uh, because as cool as it might sound, um, especially if you're coming from anywhere in the West, yeah. um, to get on the bus system, um, it's 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 not very efficient. Mm -hmm. um, it's not very efficient. It's very, very tightly packed like okay. sardines. Yeah. Uh, and there is Uber in, in Ghana. Mm -hmm. So we would always recommend uh, Uber over the taxi systems, over the tro-tro, you know, the bus systems. Uber, 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 Uber all day. And I'll tell you why. For one, we took the taxi system um, and the in the middle of the drive with our taxi driver, he decided to jack the price up. Yeah. See, those and one of those isolated situations we're talking isolated about. Isolated situations. Yeah. And in the mid-ride, he said, you're going to pay me X amount more. Exactly. It came out to $5 in American money. But just the fact that mm -hmm. he decided mid-ride that... He was sitting in traffic a little too long and he was just mm -hmm. going to jack the price up yep. in the middle after we had already negotiated a price, yep. which you don't do that in business. When you shake hands and that's that, then that's the way that it's supposed to move. Exactly, babe. Uh, let me just add with that too. Yeah. Do you remember about the air conditioning suit? Then he was trying to charge that's what for it was. AC. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We we were good with a little bit of hotness Heat. in the car, but we had our, our small daughter. Yeah. And of course, you, you moving around with a three-year-old AC kind of makes it's a no brainer on that, but yes, yeah. he tried to charge us more yeah. for that, and I thought that that just wasn't it just wasn't cool. It wasn't of know? integrity. But when you take Uber, mm -hmm. the price that is there is the price that you're gonna pay, mm -hmm. and all of the drivers know that, and that there's no way that you can be uh, gouged because there it's Uber, mm -hmm. and Uber in Ghana does not um, you still have to pay out of pocket so you can't go and think uber and then your credit card is linked to it and then it's going to pay that mm -hmm. way um unless it's changed from four years ago yeah. you have to pay cash but at least the price that you see is exactly what you pay yep. and then you go about you go about your day so you just want to make sure if you do the uber um that they don't start the trip uh before they actually pick you up because we heard that that's mm -hmm. one way that the some drivers try to uh you know gank you essentially mm -hmm. is they start the trip before they even get to your your location to pick you up so they made a little bit of money before even picking you up and then of course taking you to your destination so just you know be on the lookout yeah, for that. so yeah. all right did you have anything there well it was a part about the white jesus oh yeah yeah so that's something that's pretty common um in in Africa, yeah. period. In, uh, in, in the U.S. In the, in the U.S. <laughs> as well. Yeah. Um, obviously, when there's an area that's been colonized, mm -hmm. um, you know, by um, some of the um, the Christian um, uh, minist minist ministry, uh, the people, the people that come to spread the gospel. Yeah, like missionaries. Uh, missionaries. That's yeah. the word I was looking for. Mm -hmm. um, back in the day, mm -hmm. you know, people and. In full disclaimer, we are followers of Christ. Mm -hmm. um, we're not followers of white Jesus. We're yeah. followers of the Christ that is explained of hair of wool. Yeah, feet of brass. And feet of brass. My hair looks pretty woolly. So, mm -hmm. you know, that that, that tells yeah. you what, what we think Jesus looks like. Exactly. Um, but um, yes, you know, individuals that do missionary work, they're going to present what they believe mm -hmm. um, Christ looks like. Yeah. So if you're in Ireland, for example, you might draw your mm -hmm. Christ to be blonde hair, blue eyes. And that is not historically accurate. Yeah. But that comes with, uh, you know, having knowledge of, of the true identity of Christ. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I, I don't think that the person that made that comment obviously is Christian. So you're entitled to your opinion yeah. on that aspect. But um, let's not uh, conflate the two and and realize that that we are followers of Christ. Mm -hmm. We're followers of the Christ that the Bible breaks down. He looks like exactly. So that's that. That's it. Good explanation, babe. Thank you, sweetie. Yeah. All right. So let's share our screen again. Mm -hmm. I really want to get a, an angry comment. I just want to because I want to address it. All right. Um, I'm just gonna keep scrolling mm -hmm. here. If you have anything to to say while I'm looking, well, why babe is looking? I do just want to share something with you guys. So. For me, some of my treasure um, from Accra. Oh, I do want to say this. There were a lot of people that kept saying, why do you keep referring to it as Africa as Africa? Because if you come from where we're from, America, where we're born, 
you just want to go to Africa. You're not really carried away with the title. We knew we were in a crime. You know, we bought our ticket. We knew where we were. But it just sounds, it just rolls off your tongue real nicely, okay? But anyway, one of my treasures was um, outside of my hair wraps, my material was this shea butter, you guys. Um, we um, actually had the most amazing, amazing experience in, um, I think it was in Macola as well, I believe. Um, where we met this lady and she um, took us uh, basically through the market where um, we saw a lady, hopefully Babe can um, link this or something, we'll see. But anyway, where this lady was actually, she had the um, whole cola nut and everything and is it cola nut? Is that what it is? Cola or the nut? shea butter nut or which uh, one was uh, it? Uh, shea nut. Oh. Shea nut, I guess. I don't know, y'all. Hopefully he can link it. Anyway, and um, she was, um, she had already started mixing and doing the whole process and everything. And she, um, we decided to get some from her. And so we had like two big, um, what do you call it? Two big plastic wrappings of shea butter that was left over. But then she put, put some in here in this container. And uh, speaking of that, the lady that led us over to be able to get the shea butter, like she went off and found someone else that had a, a, um, a con this container and we was able to get that. I mean, talking about just working together, y'all, it was just awesome. Anyway, this is the last of our shea butter, y'all, from our 2016 trip to Ghana. So I told babe, I said, you know, we, we definitely got to make this happen soon because, you know, it's just something amazing about seeing the lady take her hand and just scoop it just yeah. scoop it all and that put was it pretty in dope. it was pretty cool so that was yeah pretty i just dope. wanted to share that did you find something babe? yes i did i did okay. um let me share the screen again guys okay. so y'all can see it and then we'll dive right into it okay all right so this person said here um reminds me of my first visit great show however bro referring to me <laughs> you should have done the other six canopy bridges even without the girls you're, i haven't seen this one you're lucky you didn't have school kids running on and shaking the bridge love Ghana, such happy and peaceful people mm -hmm. we are in the west we in the west have more comfortable lives but we are miserable compared to people going uh where is this i'm trying to open this up here Again, uh, next uh, year. compared to these people we're going again next year mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> so um what they're referring to is the scene when uh, this is after we left cape coast um before. i'm sorry before cape coast yeah. we went to kakum national park yes. and um there was a <laughs> canopy bridge that was 100 feet high in the air mm -hmm. and you know what i'm i'm just not about that life i <laughs> thought i was because it was my idea to go on that bridge. To go on, no, not to go on the bridge. To, well, it was too, but to go yes. on the seven parts of it. Yes. I was like, babe, you sure we shouldn't just do the the, the short version, which I didn't realize was still three bridges. Right. Yeah. But anyway, go ahead, babe. Yeah, I'm not about that life. And I, and I say that because, guys, the bridge shakes like crazy. Mm -hmm. And not only are you so high up in the air, I had my wife and our small, do our yeah. small child. If you fall off that bridge, there is no bungee cord tied no. to your back that's gonna pull you back up. Mm -mm. You out of here. Yeah. And it's a hundred feet up in the air. Mm -hmm. And the uh, guide kept saying that the bridge could hold <laughs> two elephants. That's a hot darn lie. I don't believe that because I just didn't believe it. It yeah. shook too much and I was terrified. And it was holes on both sides. It was whole, yeah, so, you know, it, like it, it didn't look like it was maintained. Yeah. yeah. If you're a thrill seeker, <laughs> you're gonna enjoy going mm -hmm. on all the bridges. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I get my thrills in, in other ways, guys. And yeah. I'm just not I'm not about that life. But y'all, it was cool though. Like it was scary. Like when we first started, once it started swaying, but like it, we were in the rainforest, like so it was just like trees all around. So it was really beautiful. And I was so happy that Babe recorded it or whatever. But Babe yeah. was scared out of his mind and he's yeah. like trying to he's like, okay, keep going. I'm like, babe, we're going. I, and I'm I was just trying to talk talk myself. Exactly. I'm realizing terrifying. that he's nervous and i'm just y'all i had libby's hand like i was grabbing her so tight she like was. i was not about to let this baby go i had one hand babe had another hand we were moving yeah. and then when we um heard okay we were like okay we're gonna do the short way we're not gonna go on the long way yeah. and then we found out it was three bridges yeah i i, I mean <sighs> the long way to, like i said i guess if you just keep going and if it's just you and I don't know, cause I'm tall, so yeah. it was like the wind was blowing me back. <laughs> I just, and all I kept thinking about was 
my my baby, my baby, my baby. I don't yeah. want the baby, anything after the baby. Yeah. So that's that. Not about that life. It is what it is. All right. <laughs> so let's uh find some more comments here. And we appreciate y'all rocking with us. Someone said, Mother Yamakas, great lady. Yes. I love you, Mom. God bless you from Ivory Coast. Yeah, Sister Yamakas, she oh. um was awesome. Yeah, she was amazing. Yeah. She was so welcoming. We, we, look her up, y'all. Look her up, yeah. We like to stay. Uh, One Africa is mm -hmm. the name of her resort. Resort, yes. One Africa, and we featured it in our film, so... Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, someone Living, said, "I'm gonna bite your cheek off, baby girl. So cute. Thanks for the documentary, family." And if again, if you want to support the channel, what we got going on, uh, and contribute to Liberty's College Fund, the link to do it is in the description mm -hmm. of this video. Hold on. One All minute. right. I just want to. Uh, I went to Ghana. The only reason I didn't go. Mm -mm. <laughs> this is interesting. Uh, what did they say here? I didn't go to places like that because in Mississippi where we can carry firearm with us. I don't go to California. I don't All really right. understand that. Anyway. So uh, what's the intro song? It's uh, Chance the Rapper. Uh, it's from his album, uh, the, the Coloring Book. Mm -hmm. This is uh, cool. I love you guys. Your daughter is absolute sweetest. I may be white, but I truly enjoy learning more through you. I sub, so I'm looking forward to following your adventures. I know good people when I see them, bless you. That's pretty cool. That's the whole idea. Uh, learn, don't take. Learn, don't take. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. All right, let's keep going here. All right. All right. One restaurant, one restaurant cannot put you off Jalof. Good restaurants out there. All we didn't right. say that it did. Well, yeah, we didn't <laughs> say that it did. Yeah. Um, but I do want to, if I don't see the question here, because I saw it a couple times, mm -hmm. um, I do want to address um, our time there as far as eating yeah. was concerned so a couple questions that we saw asked us you know why didn't we eat more of the local food and things of that nature so um at the time we were transitioning mm -hmm. vegetarian it's a vegetarian yes. yeah we, at that time we didn't become vegan until three years ago uh yeah, all, coming up on three years ago mm -hmm. so uh, a lot of the food specifically in west africa where we were a lot of the food has meat in it yes um either chicken bouillon or goat meat, goat meat yeah. a lot of those things and so we are the type of uh veg vegans um and at this point but vegetarians as well that we didn't even want to see meat in our food mm -hmm. so aside from the fact that eating uh, off of the street from a hygienic standpoint wasn't recommended um, not necessarily because we would get food poisoning, but just our digestion system uh, is different than the digestion system of people that are mm -hmm. there and live there. Mm -hmm. Even at the hotel that we stayed at, which was the, the Charleston uh, in the hotel, uh, the young lady that runs the hotel, mm -hmm. it's her family business. Um, she talked about how, and she was from Dallas. Yeah. So it was a great hotel. We enjoyed our time there. Look yes. them up if you want to go to Ghana. They The hotel was in Tessano, by mm -hmm. the way. Tessano, which was slightly outside of uh, Accra, mm -hmm. but the Charleston Hotel. But anyways, the host was uh, born in the States, mm -hmm. but she moved back to Ghana to take care of the family business. Mm -hmm. And she talked about how she got sick, yeah. you know, for the first few months, just because your digestion system, everything mm -hmm. is adjusting to the new food, the new water, the new everything. And um, that was something that we were not at liberty to have to deal with. Yeah. Um, the pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we didn't want to have to go to no hospital. We don't want to have to deal with nothing. And then on top of that, we were uh, transitioning vegetarian. So we, our options eating wise, mm -hmm. were very, very, very limited. limited yeah. My hope now is that a lot of countries, especially where we're, we plan on going anyway, when we go back to Africa mm -hmm. to do the journey to the motherland too, they have a lot of uh, vegan options. Mm -hmm. But um, my hope is that now, especially using hashtags like vegan Ghana, I'm sure that there are places in Ghana now that are offering plant-based options. There are in Nigeria. Um, yeah. They follow a couple people that are in Nigeria that mm -hmm. have vegan spots out there. So this was four years ago. Yeah. Things are getting a little bit more caught up with mm -hmm. uh, the lifestyle, but that's why we didn't eat a lot of the food there. Exactly. Uh, but we, when in the restaurant that we did go to that, we, that was supposed to be jollof 
rice balls. So right. we just kind of thought, you know, it was going to be amazing, which it wasn't. Yeah. But we we really, this is an assumption. We don't know, but we don't really think any Ghanaian people were behind that restaurant. Yeah, it was. It, yeah. We, we tasted Ghanaian jalap. Exactly. And it tastes good. It's amazing. So when we were on the beach, you guys, Labadi Beach, we yeah. ended up eating um, jalap. jalap. And we had some uh, mixed veggies. And it was amazing. But what's funny is that I did get sick off eating it, too. Yeah. Um, but a lot of it came from spice um, because I used to love love spicy food and women um many of you can relate with this <laughs> after you have a baby sometimes things just change and so now i can't do a lot of spice so i got sick i don't think it was the food i think it was just the spiciness of it because mm. it was so good like no if, you know when your nose is sweating y'all know what i'm talking yeah, about oh uh, yeah in the back of your ear start sweating <laughs> yeah in your forehead absolutely yeah. absolutely all right, so let's go back here. And so that's that. So if you go and you're plant based, you're going to have a tough time anywhere in West Africa. Yeah. Um, because it's just meat is in meat everything. Meat is a big deal. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to just kind of speed through these comments here, trying to find. Oh, someone found us on Boyce Watkins' mm -hmm. channel. We love Dr. Boyce. Um, is that an Eric Thomas top? Uh, in the video, yes, ET mm -hmm. the hip hop preacher. Yeah. Yeah, his shirt I wore it a couple times. Mm -hmm. um, ET knows me. Um, I wouldn't say he's necessarily my homeboy, <laughs> but he does know me. So mm -hmm. that's pretty dope. All right, so let's see here. Something for the fabrics. I think this might be something good right here, babe. All right. Thank you for another amazing video. I'm planning my trip to Ghana in September for my 30th birthday and have been mm -hmm. searching YouTube for videos. As a result, your own popped up and covered, and you covered most quite a bit of info in this video. I do have a question. While purchasing the fabric for your custom-made out outfits, how do you figure out the number of yards you need? Oh, that's a really good question. Oh, yeah. So most of the time, um, the fabric is already sectioned out uh, for the... I guess the 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 amount of yardage that you would need mm -hmm. is that a word yardage, yardage yeah. did I make that up okay yeah. um that you would need for your outfits but you can just ask they will let you know yeah. that's exactly what we did we were like okay this is you, this is what we wanted to do so you might want to say like okay we want a dress for me a dress for liberty a top and bottom for Marvin, how much fabric would we need for that? And mm -hmm. then they will let you know. But yeah. usually six yards um, come together, usually in any bundle of fabric yeah. um, from our experience there in Ghana. Um, and you can get a little bit more or a little bit less sometimes, okay. um, especially like for my hair wraps, I usually do like one yard, two yards, which is like one yard. Okay. Um, but yeah, basically just ask, ask them, let them know what you want to do. If you just want a bottom, it, you know, it may require a little less, but ask whoever your, um, Reseller is, and they will yeah. they will help you out. And typically, they have magazines with different mm -hmm. models wearing an outfit. But if you yes. have a particular outfit in mind, take a picture of it, keep it on your phone, yeah. and show it to them. And they'll look at the person and say, "Yeah, you'll need X amount." Exactly. And, oh, that is so true. Yeah. Go ahead, babe, and I'm maybe fine. add another couple of inches yes. just to cover any shortages and whatnot. So. Exactly. And that's exactly yeah. what we did. As a matter of fact, we went online mm -hmm. when we did uh, order our outfit. Now there is a scene where we found a shop. Oh, that was, it was amazing y'all. Um, and it was, we were in, um, where the restaurant was that Osu. day. We were we in, Osu. in Osu. Yeah. yeah. And it was a late, two ladies, but one in particular, she was a seamstress and she was just sitting there sewing and she yep. had all type of magazines, the ones that Babe is talking about. And so we were trying to do something there, but then Babe was like, you know, he kind of felt like we need to maybe uh, check with the um, owner of the hotel just because we didn't really know where we were. We didn't know how to get back yeah. and all that type of stuff. It was very... Um, What's a good word? It was very um, down home, if you will. Yeah. So when we finally contacted um, the owner of the hotel where we stayed, then we just Googled pictures and we found what we wanted. And we um, were able to show um, the lady. I don't know. Did we send her pictures? Like, how did we I think we, we she came with some magazines, I think, or we had a magazine or something. I don't I'm know. I'm saying the first time she came and picked it up. I think fabric. so. I, I don't think even so. remember. That's a good yeah. question. Yeah, and we showed her. We had found pictures offline. So yeah. Yeah, but it just look at the shop. You know, it, if you are in the Macola markets mm -hmm. or there, and you see that they're selling fabric there, we recommend the one that we went to, which mm -hmm. we featured in the video. It wasn't Macola. It was uh, another where we got the fabric from. Yes. 
it was the where they were dancing. Wasn't it Macaulay Bay? It, watch the movie. <laughs> You'll see it. There. I think it was Macaulay. I, I labeled every market. Oh, we went there the second. I think we went to Macaulay twice. Okay. I think that's what happened, babe. Yeah. I don't think Y'all, so. this was it's four years ago. Four years. Watch the movie. <laughs> That's it. All right. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, mm-hmm. you want to just kind of come with a picture and then uh, add a couple more inches yeah, to, to yeah. cover yourself. So. They'll tell you. They, they're experts. Experts, they know. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, so um, let's see. Someone I went to college with oh, yeah, commented. I just saw That's that. pretty yeah. dope. Um, is your husband Ghanaian or did he ever live there? Your accent changed. Wasn't sure that was for your protection or what, but I thought I heard you, day you had lived in Ghana as a child. No, Nigeria. Yeah, you didn't um, watch the whole documentary. You, you didn't watch the whole documentary. <laughs> All right, so. You're just so, being silly, y'all. Yeah, um, something about eggs here. <laughs> Someone said, Libby made me laugh describing the music. She was right in that it would feel uncomfortable because she didn't understand the words and it would come across erratic. She's too adorable. Mm -hmm. Uh, How crass to have shop music with profanity in it. Not cool. All right. So um, I think what they're referring to Mm -hmm. is the scene on Labadi Beach where we were approached Mm -hmm. by um, some Jamaican cats. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if they were... Jamaican immigrants, or if they were just Ghanaian guys that did Jamaican music, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but they were awesome. Yeah. But yeah. Liberty did not enjoy it. Um, we listened to reggae. We're a Bob Marley she, yeah, house. Love Bob Marley. Yeah. I had locks for years because of mm-hmm. Bob Marley. Mm-hmm. But um, they, they, the guys were very much, you know, in our face. And, yeah. You know, they were drumming and you know they were hustling obviously yeah. for for money which I felt terrible because they did so well, yeah. but the only cash I had on us was for our Uber ride mm-hmm. back. <laughs> so um, you just don't wanna keep a lot of cash on you, just keep enough for that day. Yeah. And then um, unfortunately we weren't able to to give them as much of a tip as we would have liked. But yeah. if we go back, hopefully they got some shine and got a deal or exactly. something off of our video. Yeah. <laughs> so, But yeah, but Libby was, I mean, and she's just like that today, y'all. Like if yeah. she's not feeling she something, yeah, and we, to be honest, we've kind of raised her like that to really yeah. just be in tune with how she feels about different things. And everybody is in a friend. Exactly. You know, yeah. Get, get some wisdom from your parents. Exactly. Look at your parents. If your parents give you the green light, then exactly. that's that. But yeah. yeah, stranger danger. Stranger yeah, danger. and she's very naturally shy around people she doesn't know anyway. You know how yeah. some kids will kind of talk to anybody? That's not liberty. Yeah, so. absolutely not. Yeah. All right, so we're going to answer a few more questions here. We're coming up on an hour. Hope mm-hmm. you're enjoying yeah. uh, this podcast. And let us know. If you want more, we'll do a part two. Maybe absolutely. Part three. Absolutely. All right, so thanks for visiting. The dude that kicked down the well in 300. Yeah, yeah. So the, the dude that was kicked down the well in 300. Okay, so our... Our uh, cab driver, our Uber driver, one time, one of the parts when we take it is, um, oh, okay, okay, this is a good <laughs> one here. Okay. Well, anyways, he looked like the guy from 300. Yeah. So, all right. So, someone said here, this is what I was hoping to see. Um, I've been biting my tongue. You went to Africa as an African, not talking about your wife behaving like a white person. You should have gone to your native Nigeria. What I did like about your video was your child, Libby. So she felt comfortable enough to call her by her nickname. The only true African in this video was Liberty. <laughs> embracing everything. Hold on. Embracing everything without a brainwashed way of thinking. Sad. She is going to grow up without knowing her true roots. You can't be African in a foreign continent. I was surprised you all. Oh, this gets better. Um, I was surprised you all ate. <laughs> I can't even open it. Yeah, why um, is it not coming? I don't know. Probably, I, okay. Try but it one more time, babe. I was surprised you all ate, and then it says so. Okay. There it is. Uh, I'm surprised all you guys ate was fried stuff while in a country with all natural, healthy food. Anyway, <laughs> it is what it is. All right. So I'd like to tackle this first. Yeah, okay. I'm going to jump in next. So um, mm-hmm. that obviously was a person that was, was um, triggered by. Um, our slight critique of some aspects of our travel yeah. um, to Ghana, um, indicating. So here's the thing: when you are giving a perspective that is not 100% positive, you're going to offend somebody, mm-hmm. and that's okay because at the end of the day, um, if if real change happens, then it was a it was a positive thing. Yeah. But a lot of what this person said, she already had her he or she, I don't know if it was a woman or not. It sounded yeah. like it was a woman. But 
he or she had a perception already that she had in her mind of us. And if you're if if that's all you gathered from that film, then you were you were the type of person that was already looking for something to be offended about anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, and made it a point to say she was biting her tongue, even though technically she wasn't since she commented. But (laughs) the fact that we brought our daughter with us, let me tell you something that's different about Marvin and Amber, that you'll notice it's a running theme in all of our content, is that for the most part, Liberty is with us every single place that we go, specifically travel. We don't do babysitters, we Mm -hmm. don't do none of that. She goes with us by choice, that's intentional. Um, because we want her to experience everything that we experience. The only reason that she's not in this podcast right now is because she's talking to her homegirl. <laughs> and when she's talking to her homegirl, she's she's a seven-year-old. So mm-hmm. it is what it is. But the fact that we, bring, we brought her with us yeah. to the motherland mm-hmm. means that she is actually... Uh, has a leg up over a lot of kids her age and a lot yes. of adults yeah. that have never been to exactly. Africa. So I think that it's disingenuous what this individual said. But again, you can't control how people Mm -hmm. um, perceive uh, certain aspects of what you do. Mm -hmm. You just have to do what feels natural to you and comfortable to you. And that's kind of what it is. Exactly. And I just wanted to add that um, my goal specifically as a um, African in America that didn't realize I was African at one point, many of you may be able to relate with that. Um, Just kind of being born here. I mean, we've gone through so many different names, you know, um, from the N word, you know, to um, black, you know, to colored. colored or from colored to black to, you, you know, exactly. So we've gone through so many different names that I honestly didn't grow up knowing that I was an African, you know, because I wasn't in Africa. But once I came into the knowledge of self and understood that, um, my goal and dream was to always um, instill that in the offspring that we would be blessed to have. So since Libby's been young, like we've been talking to her about who she is and about her identity and about... um, What she consumes. Exactly. And making sure it's culturally culturally responsive. She sees everyone represented and exactly. what she watches yeah most definitely and so um funny story y'all I couldn't even make this up if I wanted so Libby is so proud to be an African um she um she always equates with Ghana because that's where we've been right. so like even though our direct first culture is Nigeria and then after that would be um Liberia and um Sierra Leone and then Ghana she always reverts back to Ghana mm-hmm. because guess what that's where she's had exposure to yeah. and um <laughs> so the other day not even the other day this happened so many times we'll be at the table so we'll, I'll put the food down and oh, Liberty I know will start eating I know yes and she'll just pick up the food and just start putting it in her mouth no utensils and i'm like liberty um there's a fart right there babe you want to use a fart mommy i don't need a fart i'm an african that's what she told us <laughs> saying about africans eating with their with hands, our hands which we do which we do yeah, yeah like you know for those of us that love food food you know right. how it is no, I know. so um i thought that was so amazing and then you know if you guys have been following us we have our garden as well same thing let me just go to the garden pick a leaf pick some kale up uh libby you go you're gonna wash your kale mommy i don't have to i'm an african yeah. So she's, she, or like, that just gives me chills to know that yeah. now she's seven. A seven year old has that much pride. When I was seven, yeah. I didn't even know I was an African. Yeah. She knows. She so, knows. Yeah. you know. And, and even me, being, mm-hmm. being that I have, you know, direct uh, yes. parents that are from there, um, I didn't really feel mm-hmm. any super connection to the country other than through my family when we spoke the language to each other yeah. but you know my parents didn't didn't teach me the the language by by choice yeah. and they said it was because they didn't want to confuse me as a mm-hmm. child mm-hmm. and only to find out later that a child at that age can learn mm-hmm. like five mm-hmm. languages um i even being a nigerian i mm-hmm. would get crap from other nigerians yeah, older nigerians so because i don't speak the language yeah. and i, I just I scratch my head and i'm like yo I, i'm not speaking the language because i don't want to it's because i can't my parents didn't but, teach yeah, yeah. And, and of course there are apps and things of that nature that i could download but you know it, it is what it is at this point yeah. um you know it's just it's a it's a hard language to to learn but mm-hmm. what we can do is make sure that we go to Africa at least every three years mm-hmm. in some capacity. Um, get some property out there, you know, have some have a have a, a base connected there, do mm-hmm. some business out there. 
um, with the right kind of people. And that's how we create a new yes, connection exactly. um, to Africa. But, you know, I, I get a little upset that I don't know the language, but, yeah. you know, it is what it is. But, and then the thing about it, too, um, like you were saying, babe, is that yeah. there are other ways that you can connect. I other mean, ways. obviously, yeah. knowing the language would be awesome, you know, um, but um, there are other ways that you can connect, and babe just mentioned those. And yeah. so, you know, just to go back to that person's question, yeah, we're not concerned about our daughter um, not knowing who she is, but she already does. We it, It's yeah. an everyday thing in our household. First God and then everything else outside of that. Yeah. And so she knows who she is and she she's proud of who she is. And yeah. we constantly have conversations with her just about identifying what's beautiful on her. We talk about yeah. all of her features and so on and so forth. Yeah. So. I, I didn't grow up loving my African features. Mm -hmm. My I was told my lips were too big. Mm -hmm. um, my no Well, I didn't get comments about my nose. I think mm -hmm. I have a cute nose. You do but, have a cute nose. We have the you. same nose. Yeah. Only obviously, baby's bigger than I am. Yeah, so. I, I love my yeah, nose. Yeah. But my, I was told I, you know, I, I had big lips, mm -hmm. and now people are paying to have those African features yep. um, that that we were taught to despise. And mm -hmm. for me, it was always the African booty scratcher comments. Yeah. Um, all those kind of comments, why you don't have flies in your eyes and all that mm -hmm. stuff. So I didn't necessarily grow up loving being yeah, African. African. And then I was told and taught yeah. either uh, directly or indirectly or subconsciously yeah. that you were different from me. Yes. Even though we, we, we look the, the same, same, you were different from me. Yeah. Um, you were an Akata, yeah. which... You know, if you've heard that word before, it's not a positive thing. If yeah. you ever say it around me, it's going to be a big problem. Yeah. But that is a negative word. Yeah. And it's now trying to be spun like it's not meant to be. It's a negative word for, for African-Americans. Yes. And mm -hmm. one of the derivatives means an African-American cotton, cotton picker, picker, a slavery, kata, slavery yeah. and making those differences. So that is, again... That's that ain't, that's the devil. Let me just yeah. put it like that. Creating that separation, yep. and that's how we can't be unified because we think we're separate. Exactly. And Malcolm said it best. Malcolm said it yeah. best. And then obviously, you know, you have the new movements now, the ADO, oh, ADOS, uh, foundational black yeah. and all that stuff. And I, I I respect that, but at the end of the day, we're all we're yeah, all one. We're all, we're one, all one. One and, and and you know, that's just I'm just gonna leave it. That's there. our opinion. That's, that's how our we opinion. feel. Yeah. And that's how we're raising our child. That's how we're raising our child. So all right, we're gonna answer one more question here. Mm -hmm. We are over the one hour mark and mm -hmm. I have thoroughly enjoyed this, but I wanna answer Make one more question and let's uh see if we can find <laughs> a good one. Oh, see I, I ate that person up in the comments. I can't even remember. But anyways, yeah. um let's see here. So many, so many wonderful yeah, comments really nice, uh, 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 about liberty. Someone <laughs> said, "Can you hear her? Can you hear her husband speaking like Black, Black Panther?" Panther? <laughs> that was two years ago. That is That's so funny. funny. That's funny. Yeah. All right. The head of the household. Also interesting. interesting. We can't go back home oh, with an American biblical thinking mindset. A man, cold. Okay. Let's, can, let's... can never be the head of the. Okay. First of all, you got to spell. That's what. You got you got to spell right. Uh, a man Tiffany. cold never be the head of the household. household. Men require the energy of women for complete fulfillment. Okay. Well, so, you know, we well, only well, require God to fulfill us. Right. And when I say head of household, obviously, if somebody breaks into this household, I'm not going to be expecting her to jump on the guy. No, I'm going to go uh, as the head of household, yeah. and and they just gonna they're gonna catch something they wish they ain't never exactly. caught. Exactly. So, yeah. So that, with, that's that negative. You just yeah. looking for a reason to be negative. To be negative. We're yeah. we're, we're we're not fifty fifty. We're a hundred a hundred. And I learned that from Babe um, when we talked about that concept. But we operate as one unit. Yeah. She can speak for me in any capacity, and I can speak for her in any capacity. That's how well we know each other. If, if I know something's not gonna gel well with Babe. I can pretty much say uh, my wife's not gonna like that. No, yeah. That Amber ain't gonna like it, or babe's not gonna like that, and vice versa. So, exactly. you know, you, you that person is, can't can't be in a relationship, and if they're in a relationship, they're not in a uh, a positive one to yeah. have that kind of that kind of ideology. Uh, that kind of like yeah yeah. 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 But, but let me just leave it at that. All right, so I'll take another one because that was kind of quick. Yeah, it was a quick question. Okay. All right, all right, Mary Xmas Ghana motherland from up west. Just got my DNA back, mm. and I'm 40% Ghanaian. Awesome. awesome, awesome. Wow, 40%. Um, why were you speaking in that accent? Because I wanted to. <laughs> you know, it's a fake accent at that. All yeah. right. <laughs> That's what a person said. Boy, some of you people are funny. Yeah. All right. Thank God you guys went to the right country. If it was Nigeria, it's not safe. Yeah, but hopefully things are 
getting okay. better, getting better. Yeah, because we yeah. do want to go. So, All oh, right. okay. Um, this was interesting right here. That uh, was five days so, ago. So we'll answer these last two questions here. Okay. Um, great. This person said, great stuff and balanced view of Ghana. I can't help but think you should have linked up with someone on the ground to guide you and smooth you into the culture. That would have made your experience much better than it was. WRT, the bathroom situation, it definitely needs to improve, but best advice is handle all your business before, mm -hmm. you, before you head out and hit the road. And Good we job, learned though. that. And we, yeah. and we learned that. And again, we wanted a natural local experience we yeah. didn't want a tour guide that's what most people that go to ghana um mm -hmm. and it's just great all around they went with a tour guide yeah so. where they have like the big charter buses yeah. and stuff even yeah. the tour when we went to elmina and all that yeah we um in cape coast we were in a, like a little minivan it was four yeah. of us us three and another person and the driver so i guess five of us yeah. so it was very very i'm trying it's a word i'm thinking of yeah. um but anyway, it was it was still great. I don't regret it at all. I'm glad we did it the way we yeah. did it. I would not have wanted to it be on... It was an organic one. way. It was very organic, organic. I would not have wanted to be on someone else's time stamp right. of how we do... So. I mean, we're travelers. We're, we right. didn't just go to Africa. We are travelers. We've been doing it for years. So it was just... This was just like our thing that we had to do. We like, we yeah. gotta go, we gotta go back home. And um, we have to travel the way we're used to traveling, you know? So yeah. that's the reason why we found a place that we felt led to that was, you know, safe and warm and stuff like that. And we're a frugal family. So oh, yeah, when you take too. those tours, yeah. um, I, I see a couple cats right now slinging trips to Africa on, yeah. on Instagram. And it's like the cost and everything included, You could, we, we spent, I won't even. I can't even say we spent two thousand uh, dollars while we were there. I don't um, know. And that's including hotel. Hotel, yeah. That's including hotel, including going to Cape Coast, including going to Kakum, yeah. including eating, including shopping that we did. We didn't spend two thousand. We didn't even. Yeah, remember we had our money. We had we had a certain amount of money we brought with us, and then we had converted it our cash um, over to CD. CDs, and we ended up. I want to say. We, well, we had we spent a thousand dollars. Who? I don't no, even think we, we spent a thousand dollars. And then yeah. we we kept souvenirs, like the money that we ended up having left over. We had to kind of find something to do with some of it. Yeah. We gave some to the staff at the hotel, yeah. but then we were advised, like, kind of not to. You know, we really we shouldn't because they're being compensated. It's just to answer the question about the person that was asking about us tipping or something, we yeah. were told like not to do that. Like, I guess yeah. they have their own system, and it was just at this hotel. It may be different at other places, but right. yeah, it was another question. Babe, to the uh, second part under there let's that we're see. going to talk about. Let's see here. All right. Um, oh, about the tip. I just about oh, the tip. brought you the stroll, the art and stroller. Is that not a right. custom there? Why does your husband dumb down his accent, but we understand English very well? There's so much comments about my accent. Yeah, we saw that a lot. My accent is pretty good. It is I very it's good. good. It is it's very good. good. It is very, it's very good. good. It's good enough. <laughs> it gets the job done. That's all that matters. All right. Great job. Check out Addis. I think they mean Addis Ababa. If you want to eat real food, go to Mama's African Kitchen. Do not go to restaurants. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's a restaurant, if they're just saying go to yeah, someone's African Kitchen. All right. Uh, Rastafari Planet, is he on? I uh, wanted to see the gymnast guys, but they weren't. They aren't the original entertainer guys, surely. Jamaicans are Guineans. OMG. Um, I think, I mean, that's it. I mean, I, there's hustles everywhere. Even in the U.S., there are lots of baobab trees. I'm just kind of going through. Yeah. All right. So I think, um, I think we covered enough of the questions that yeah. stuck out to us. So, um, you know, main takeaway is... Africa is where it's at, yeah. travel wise. Mm -hmm. um, you want to make your way there, uh, specifically if you are of African descent, mm -hmm. you have to go to Africa. It, 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 you have to do it. It's cheap to do it. It should be really, really cheap at this point once, once uh, it's safe to travel, yeah. hopefully. Um, and it doesn't matter what part of Africa you go to, just 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 pick a place. Yeah, and just go. get you a map of Africa and be like, okay, bam, and just yeah. try it out. You do a little research before yeah. you go, depending on your needs. Yeah, you know the point. The point of our documentary was to showcase West Africa because mm -hmm. the way that it was done. So we'll just tell you how we're going to be doing Journey to Motherland. Yeah. It's going to be on each corner yes. of Africa. So we won't say the next part, whether it's North mm -hmm. Africa, South Africa, or or um, East Africa, East Africa. Mm -hmm. but that's our objective but again if you are from there already then 
you know, if you have a camera, you can create your own, a camera phone, you can create your own version of it. But we gave our perspective based yes. on our experience. Exactly. Everybody is different. Mm -hmm. And I think if we respect the differences um, of each other and look for ways that we do connect and we mm -hmm. do agree, that's the best way and the best takeaway that you can you can get from the experience that we presented. This was our art that we shared with the world. I agree. So, do you have any parting words? I'm I'm just excited, y'all, for Journey to the Motherland Part Two. Yeah, I've been excited. Just let me just throw this in there. We was actually supposed to be going um, at the end of last year. Yeah, we were. And then all this stuff started happening, and we were we kept getting. Um, information about this was going on and that was going on coronavirus yeah. and so it just we I, I kept telling babe i was like babe i, I don't know i think we need to kind of chill yeah you know and that's when we ended up going to paris france if you guys been following us yeah. that was supposed to be, that was africa. Supposed to be africa yeah it was <laughs> yeah so it is what it is but um we hope yeah. you enjoyed this podcast uh it, again if you are watching this on youtube please give us a thumbs up for this video share this with anyone that may have some questions or comments about africa share our documentary we'll link uh, journey to the motherland mm -hmm. in the description of this video that way if you're a new subscriber you can uh, check out the documentary we think it was very well done over 130,000 views and climbing so that lets us know that you know other people really appreciate the art Definitely. and um Again, if you want to support support the content that we are putting out, the link to do it is right below uh, this video. Follow us on Instagram. Yes. Yeah, at good. oh, go ahead. I'm oh, sorry. go ahead. No, no, no. Go oh, ahead. Follow us on Instagram. The link to do that is in this video as well as Facebook. I, I just wanted to add and let us know if you guys want us to answer any more questions. And like Babe said earlier, if you yeah. have more questions, you can link them below, and we can do another video on um, our trip to Ghana. All right, guys. Until the next video, this is Marvin and Amber, and, and we're, we're with, with the, the family. family all. all right, guys. Bye. Peace.